What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Hurricane and welcome back to the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty as we're here in week 5 of season 2 the Gophers coming off of a big win last week against Michigan and finally reclaiming the little brown jug for the first time since 2005 and this week they try to get back another rivalry trophy in the Floyd of Rosedale as they take on the Iowa Hawkeyes at home at TCF Bank Stadium. The Hawkeyes come in number 22 in the nation and they have the nation's top ranked pass offense and as you guys know our pass defense has struggled this year since the first game of the year but our offense was pretty exciting last week after the introduction of the pistol formation that helped us beat Michigan but let's get into week five it's Minnesota football and it's the pistol offense to begin the game again Nelson is going to throw on the first play and he goes outside to Andre McDonald a short catch yards after the catch get him nine yards in the game's first play Back to a full house pistol, handoff, it's Kirkwood. Up the middle, bouncing off of one tackle, picking up five in the process. Kirkwood ran for 108 yards last week. Pistol again as Nelson fakes the Kirkwood. Rolling right, good coverage downfield, and Nelson just gets rid of it. That'll make it third and five for the Gophers. As Donnell Kirkwood is motioned out of the backfield next to Andre McDonald, and Nelson throws on third down and five. Middle cut by Kirkwood, doesn't get the block he needs, and he is shy of the first down marker. The Gophers punt and it's Iowa football and the nation's top ranked pass offense comes on the I formation to run the football. It's Damon Bullock taking the carry and there's nowhere to go. We have a swarming run defense this year that's played pretty well on Devondre Campbell. He's been the man on the outside. He makes the tackle. Third and nine. A handoff again. Maybe they're hiding this pass offense as Bullock goes nowhere and he's taken down by Theron Cochran. Three and out for the Hawkeyes as the punt goes deep to Drew. Bulatarski at his own 35-yard line, feels the punt, goes right upfield. He gets a couple of blocks and gets 16 yards on the return. The Gophers begin the drive in Iowa territory, but now it's third down and seven as Nelson throws out of the shotgun. Good protection. He finds his tight end. It's Drew Goodger making the catch over the middle. He has 12 yards and a Gophers first down to a three-wide set pistol formation. Nelson is throwing on second down and 12. Middle caught by Devin Crawford Tufts, who is decked but gets five. That makes another third down and seven. Three wide again. Here's the blitz as Nelson has his pass batted away by Nico Law, which makes it fourth down and seven for Ryan Santoso to come up for the field goal attempt. 47 yards. Leidner on the hold, and it wasn't far enough. Okay, I'm starting to understand what the limits are to this new kicker we have, this redshirt freshman. That was bad. No score still late first quarter as Bullock takes the pitch right and still nowhere to go. Our run defense is one of the top of the nation right now. And finally, Cody Sokol back to throw. He's going to air it out deep to the left side and it's knocked away at the last second. Brian Body Calhoun on coverage. That was Sokol's first pass of the game. Defense is shining so far as Nelson has a quick throw that's caught by Isaac Fricky. He's been surprisingly quiet for the first three games of the season. He gets a big catch and it's second down and 13. Philip Nelson back to pass, airing it out long and it's caught by a leaping Devin Crawford Tufts in Iowa territory. A 26 yard reception. Another big play from Crawford Tufts but second down and 14 as Nelson's pressured and sacked for a loss of six. That made it third down and 20. The drive would result in a punt. Iowa has it, still no score in the second quarter as Cody Sokol back to throw, dumps it off to his tight end, Hamilton, and he takes it past the 40 yard line and gains 10. From their own 42 yard line, it's Cody Sokol out of the shotgun, a four man rush, and he's running, open space to the 50 yard line, he just stiff armed our best quarterback, and he's out of bounds after a run of 15. I thought we had to be worried about this passing attack, not still forming our best corner. But Hillier outside makes the grab on this play. Nine yard reception makes it third down and one. As Damon Bullock takes the carry and weaves outside as the first down. He's inside the red zone on this run of 15 yards. The first big run of the day for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And they keep trying to establish him. Back to the outside. Bullock has more room to run. He follows up the 15 yard scamper with a 13 yard gain. Setting up Iowa inside the five yard line. Handoff is to Bullock. He goes to the right side and he broke the plane of the end zone. Your first points on the day come on a three yard touchdown run by Damon Bullock. 7-0. 
Hawkeyes with five and a half to go in the first half. It's Nelson off the read option, but Iowa's not too fooled as Nelson gains seven, dives straight ahead. Slide next time, Phillip. Third down and four. Nelson facing the blitz. Quick throw caught by Andre. McDonald across the 40, caught 11 yards in the game. This has been a big part of this passing offense early in this year. First and 10, it's a shovel option set up as McDonald takes the quick shovel pass, only a four yard gain, but trying to get him involved in more ways in the offense. Second down, quick throw, outside it's Isaac Crickty. Here we go, establishing a rhythm. This is a gain of 12. Gophers in Hawkeye territory as McDonald comes in motion and the option is set up. It's a pitch to McDonald to the outside of the 35 and he has enough with a first down. Andre getting involved in as many ways as I can think of. I might even let him play quarterback for a while. Hand off to Kirkwood. He's scampering up the right side. Has some space, a 14 yard run. A very strong drive being put together. Hand off as Kirkwood again out of the pistol but this time he's taken down after a gain of zero forcing the Gophers into a tough third down and 10. We opt for a three wide set as Nelson takes the shotgun snap and Iowa drops back into his zone. Nelson flushed out to the right and just throws it away. We'll settle for a field goal attempt again. A good drive that ends with Ryan Santoso coming out and this time he keeps it inside the right upright just barely and it's far enough to make it 7-3. to three. Low scoring but a four point game against the 22nd ranked team in the NCAA. On second down, it's Cody Sokol running, but this time Marcus Jones is there to take him down. It's a one yard gain, forcing third down and nine. The love at the football back and get some points before the half, but have to get a stop here as Sokol lobs it out to Hillier, who reaches back behind him and makes a 14 yard reception that extends the Iowa drive as they're operating in Gopher territory. Here's the blitz. Sokol takes the hit and finds Ray Hamilton for the catch. He breaks one tackle inside the Gophers 30. All of a sudden, Iowa is threatening. First down, Sokol back in the pocket, and he throws it outside, and Cavante Martin Manley somehow stayed in bounds on this catch. First time seeing him today is it second down and nine inside one minute to go. Hand off to Damon Bullock, up the middle, he gets a solid gain of seven, making it third and short. Iowa needs two, Sokol back to pass, he wants to run, and he runs into Theron Cochran, who gets credit for the five yard sack. That forces a field goal attempt, and the Gophers halt the Hawkeyes' effort to score a touchdown before halftime. It's 10-3, only a seven point game as we've reached the midway point. Neither offense really standing out, maybe some missed opportunities on both sides. But we'll see how this plays out when the second half resumes next. Minnesota trying to recapture the Floyd of Rosedale. They're down by seven in the second half as Iowa has the football. It's Cody Sokol back to the ground game. They've been trying to run this all day with Damon Bullock. It's been hit or miss, but more misses than hit. As it's third down and eight, Sokol middle cut by Hillier. He's got the best of Brian Body Calhoun today. He gets a first down for the Hawkeyes. Third and six. Four man front for Minnesota. Sokol throwing lobs out. Caught Ray Hamilton on Devondre Campbell. That's a first down in the Gopher territory as this drive keeps moving. Trying to find ways to make this pass defense make plays. Here's the blitz, but it's countered by a screen to Damon Bullock. Gets a block and is caught from behind by Demarius Travis, but a 14 yard gain. On second down, a handoff to Damon Bullock. He finds a little bit of room the middle, but it closes quickly. Devondre Campbell is there again, forcing third down and seven. Devontae Martin Manley in motion. Sokol to throw, and Marcus Jones couldn't knock it away. Hillier is there again to make the grab on third down as he moves the chains again. And once again in the red zone, Gophers are to make another stand. It's second down and six. Cody Sokol to throw with plenty of time, and he finds an open tight end. That's Ray Hamilton, who cut to the outside and back inside an open space. That extends the Iowa lead to 17 to three. Minnesota has the football as Nelson's throwing to the outside. It's his tight end, Drew Goodger, and he finds it for an 18 yard gain. Trying to get back in this one, a 14 point game. Offense not moving very quickly and trying to keep balanced. Danell Kirkwood to the outside, only a gain of four. He had 26 yards at the half. Pistol full house as Nelson fakes to Kirkwood. Rolling to his left, has three receivers on this side, but decides to take off. Across midfield, a block from Williams, and here goes Philip Nelson. Inside the 10 and out of bounds. A big run for Philip Nelson. 43 yards and Minnesota inside the 10 as Iowa brings the blitz. Nelson to the end zone. Touchdown, Andre McDonald. Well, that happened very quickly. A 43-yard run and a pass to the end zone as Minnesota has cut this Iowa lead 
in half. Good rope by Andre McDonald. It's 17 to 10. Hawkeyes still lead. Cody Sokol on second down to the middle, and Damon Bullock makes the catch and stiff arms Damian Wilson, and he gets 11. Still waiting for that big play to be made in the pass game for our defense as Sokol to the outside and Tavon Smith. Wow, what a catch over Brianne Body Calhoun, 25 yards. Iowa going back to the air as the pass is cut over middle by Hillier. He takes us inside the Minnesota 30 yard line. He gets 12 on this catch. And the Iowa Hawkeyes, their offense is really heating up as Minnesota sends the blitz. And this time Hamilton makes the grab in between the linebacker zones, making it second down and one. He has five grabs on the day. He comes in motion on second down. Sokol to throw again. And Tavon Smith right in front of Devondre Campbell. Someone just swapped the ball away. Campbell has 10 tackles on the day. Hand off Damon Bullock, and he has nowhere to go but backwards. He lost five on this carry. Ben Perry the fourth on the play, making it second down and goal. Backing him up beyond the 10, but Bullock takes them back inside the 10. Gets the lost yardage back and then some. He's got seven. Third and goal from the seven yard line. Sokol from under center. He has all day. End zone, touchdown, Cavante Martin Manley. Derek Wells has played well on him for the most part today, but a great play again. And we're starting to see how good this Iowa pass game can be. Minnesota down by 14. Can Philip Nelson help us come back? His pass over the middle is intercepted. And Iowa's going to have this inside the red zone once more. They already have a 14-point lead, and Quinton Alston just gave them the football. This throw was way too late. Should have hit McDonald coming out of his break. First turnover on the day for our offense as Iowa has it. And Sokol goes play action to Bullock. And he fires to the end zone to Ray Hamilton. Another touchdown. And after some slow starting offense, Iowa has 31 points. Minnesota trails by 21. With only six and a half minutes to go as Nelson finds Isaac Frichty hitting the slant over the middle. Making it third and short. Kirkwood on the ground. This time a hole is opened up as Danelle Kirkwood has an eight yard gain. But obviously with a three-point deficit, we have to act fast. Nelson off the play, fake firing, and Frickty holds on. One of the things he struggled with early this year, the first three games, was making catches in traffic. He gets eight yards, and here is Roderick Williams taking the carry. He's got 12 on this one, trying to get him involved more with this pistol offense and trying to utilize it more to his full potential. This time Nelson rolls out to his right on the run, and he finds Frickty downfield. That's 26 yards, but the Gophers need to find the end zone, and quickly, five and a half minutes to go. Nelson out of the pistol, dropping back to throw, end zone, and Andre couldn't hang on, off the fingertips. Incomplete in the end zone, third down and nine, three wide receivers. Philip Nelson dumps it off to Danelle Kirkwood. He breaks one tackle. It's four down territory. The Gophers have to go for it on fourth down and five. Roderick Williams next to Nelson. Fourth down, Nelson passing. He fires, and Drew Goodger just flat out dropped it. He would have had at least the first down, most likely six points, and that is very costly as it's a turnover on downs, giving the football back to the Hawkeyes, who've been on the gas pedal so far this second half. And they just run the football, and they're finally opening it up a little bit, moving the chains. Nine yards for Damon Bullock, and they can run off the clock if they continue to run this way. It's Kinzeri this time. Outside breaks one tackle, and he's wrapped up for a gain of five. But Minnesota trying to use some timeouts. It's a 21-point game pretty much in the books at this point. But Damon Bullock will just end it right here. The first down that seals the deal, and that ends the game. A very disappointing loss, 31-10. To the Iowa Hawkeyes we do not reclaim the Floyd of Rosedale there are a lot of things that didn't go right in this game I thought the offense was very inconsistent there were times where we had very good established drives but different things like missed reads or the obvious drops in the end zone on that final possession halted things there was a missed field goal in the first quarter and we only get 10 points after a pretty good offensive showing last week there was little to no help in the ground game as Kirkwood ran for only 40 yards on 11 carries. Cody Sokol in the air, almost flawless, and watching back the game again, his receivers bailed him out a few times, making some great catches on the sideline and some catches in traffic, so the receivers definitely played well. Our corners are struggling, and on third down, we just couldn't get off the field. We played good run defense, but the pass game kept bailing out Iowa. Whenever they wanted to throw it, it usually worked, as evident by four incompletions out of 27 attempts. 
But that is this week's game. Nelson throws for under 200 yards. I saw some misreads in this game I wasn't very happy about. There were some plays where I needed to have better timing on the break. Definitely those in routes I was off on in this game. So we'll correct that hopefully next week. But now we're going to focus on some recruiting. And I think it's a good week to look at cornerbacks. And we need some help. And so Bryant Campbell, one of the top players in this recruiting class, is one of the guys I'm looking at. He's fast. He can play man. He can play zone. He can press you. He can do it all. I would love to get Brian Campbell here in maroon and gold. But also, Eric Parker would be a Juco transfer. He's not as talented, but he is still a very talented player. And we need some help next year because you're about to see our current quarterback situation. And look at the top three guys on this list. You won't see them here next year. They're all seniors. Brian Body Calhoun has struggled on the outside. I think Derek Wells has played all right against number one wideouts. Marcus Jones has flashed, but I think it might be time to try to work somebody else into the starting role. Maybe try Body Calhoun in the nickel and put Marcus Jones on the outside. Just to switch it up and see if we can get some more success on pass defense. But let me know what you guys think of the cornerback position in the comment section below if I should make some changes before next week's game. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video despite the loss. Subscribe if you're new to my channel and you want to see more Minnesota Dynasty. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time when we take on the winless Purdue Boilermakers in the fifth game of the year. See you guys next time. Have a great day.